Good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for uh, coming together for our fourth superintendent huddle. I know uh, a lot has happened since we were together last with the legislature coming in uh, into, into session to consider possible legislation to support our flood impacted uh, districts. So we'll, we'll talk about that some today. Um, we have a, a few other items uh, to work through. Tony, can you bring the agenda up for us? Thank you. Um, so we'll start with the check-in, just see uh, what changes, if any, or updates you have from your communities. Uh, as you're, you may be aware or are aware at this point, uh, we use this information when we are asked from the media about uh, what's going on with our Eastern Kentucky flood impacted districts. And uh, lots of folks watch these huddles. So they're interested also in just updates from your communities and how things are going. So we'll start We'll start with that uh, and uh, finding out from you uh, changes that have happened since, uh, since last week. Tony's going to talk some about um, sharing your stories. And uh, we, we appreciate those of you who have been willing to write op-eds or tell stories about that. Uh, I wanted to let you know that we are planning on visiting the flood impacted uh, community, several flood impacted communities next week. And we have confirmation that James Lane, the uh, Deputy Secretary with uh, the U.S. Department of Education and a Kentuckian uh, is coming in from the U.S. Department of Ed to also um, see what's going on. We recognize that uh, people from the state and from the federal government, we can uh, we can be a hindrance and get in the way, uh, and and we don't want to be that. But we do want uh, to share what the real impact of what the floods has been in your communities. Uh, we want to highlight the heroism and incredible efforts that are underway in your communities to get back to some sense of normalcy for your students and your staff and, and the community. We want to highlight that. And we want to highlight what's still needed uh, to make sure people know that this is going to be a, a long journey out. Uh, so so that, that'll be our purpose, and it's also part of what, what Tony's going to continue to ask you for in sharing those stories. We make sure that we've got attention still on that. Um, we've got Robin Kinney and Brian Perry on to walk you through what's been proposed so far in the legislative session to get some feedback from you on that, some questions that we have about what we've seen so far, uh, but to talk through how we can best advocate for you and give you an opportunity to talk about where you may need to make advocacy calls um, on behalf of your communities and really your whole region uh, with with legislators. We have uh, Valoria Smith on to uh, give us an update from Kentucky Emergency Management, Patty Clark on to talk about project recovery, some supports around behavioral um, uh, crisis support for your communities, and then Robin's going to finish us up with uh, finance and operations updates, just things that have changed since last week. So we got a really full and busy agenda. Let's start with just updates from your communities. I won't call on people, but I'll just ask you to come on if things have changed or there's updates from your communities that you'd like to share. If you're in a flood impacted uh, district, tell us what's going on. Uh, Commissioner in Perry County, we've uh, hit a little bit of a roadblock. We were hopeful that we could open all of our schools Monday the 29th, but the facility that's going to house Buckhorn and Robinson um, is not going to be ready. So I'm going to probably request some emergency days to get us through to the Tuesday after Labor Day. Uh, it's coming along great and uh, we're fortunate to have the work that that we have completed, but just replacing the ceiling tiles has become just an astronomical uh, task and, and really, really time consuming. So we're going to uh, have to delay the start of those two schools five days. Um, I would like to say that local government and the state have done an outstanding job here of getting our roads passable. I talked to my transportation director yesterday and he said we are going to be able to transport all of our students um, without any assist from ATVs. We may have to take different routes to get to all of those students, but we will be able to transport all of our students to school. Thank you, John. We had heard about 
those uh, potential delays in Perry County, I think that's a symptom of uh, what you're going through. It's it's like uh, peeling the onion. Every layer brings something new, uh, and you're finding out new challenges. and And so sometimes it's it's new supports, but new challenges as you go through this. So we completely understand, and I know that we've reached out to you with information around the process of requesting those waivers for those Im that those uh, impact that impacted school that you're trying to get open. A lot of challenges still ahead. Uh, thank you, John. Uh, other superintendents. Hi, this is Anna Shepard from Floyd County, and we are on our day two of school. So we began school yesterday and uh, had an awesome first day. Today's going great as well, but uh, we are just working through. We have um, not all of our enrollment at every school, um, not all students showed up. So we're working through that this morning to see uh, are the students, uh, students that were flood impacted in the families of the ones that haven't shown up. So, uh, you know, checking to see do we need to do home visits for each of those. Um, like Perry County mentioned um, and Mr. Jett, uh, all of our roads we had uh, roads still on Friday that were questionable, about five or six roads, a couple county and the, uh, a couple state and the other county roads that we were unsure if we were going to be able to get buses on. But we traveled every every road yesterday. I was on one of the hard hit hardest hit area roads on a bus and they've done amazing work getting those ready for us. Our Friskies have now employed a uh, move to working on long term goals for our families because as they start moving into places they've rented or whatever we're going to uh, you know they have different needs of course for items to rebuild their home to get uh, everything um, going from appliances to just you know supplies that they need for their homes and so we're working on that now moving into that uh, longer uh, term goals for each of our families. So it's been a wonderful start and many in our district are saying it's been one of the best starts ever that we've had, you know, so that is a huge compliment to the entire team here. That's uh, incredible to hear and uh, great to hear the progress is happening. And we also, uh, I think Tony will mention this later, we appreciate your contribution of the op-ed and sharing uh, the stories from your community. I think it's a great example of that telling making sure people are aware of what's happening uh and the progress that's been made but what's what's still needed as well thank you for doing that um, and if other, I could mention one other thing, sure. uh, we have if superintendents that are on here, we have and uh, my someone in my office should have sent out a list, but we have got books, desk, tables, uh, we have uh, cafeteria tables, so uh, you should be getting that. If you didn't get it, you should have it this morning. Just let me know what you need from that list and we'll get it to you. Thanks so much, Anna. Um, other superintendents? Uh, Commissioner, Commissioner this. Go ahead, Damian. All right, thank you. Thanks. Um, we are uh, just Damian Johnson, Jinx Independent. Uh, our elementary school, we are, um, uh, fortunately, we have nowhere else to put them, so we have to get that building back in order to go back to school. So um, we have removed all the flooring throughout the building. Sir Pro is in there doing the uh, the, the clean sanitizing of the, all the contents. That should be done by the end of this week. So my hurdle now is getting the uh, mastic glue up that's used to, to uh, glue down that VCT tile. As soon as that's done, we will be able to bring our, our kids back in on a uh, on concrete floors, and we'll work on uh, doing those uh, room at a time on a rotational basis to bring bring them back up. Um, fortunately, we have a preschool build. The, the entire building's block except for our preschool room, and it is a modular uh, unit that was kind of built into the building, um, but it looks like it's going to be a complete teardown. So that. Uh, uh, that's that's going to be an issue uh, looking at uh, what to do with them. We may can put them in another room in the building. If not, we may possibly look at taking them to the church, which is my church that that's, uh, shares the property. Um, our absolute best case scenario would be to back, be back in school by uh, the week of September the 12th. If things go perfectly, that may be doable. Um, once that occurs, uh, we've got a lot of exterior problems. The playground is completely washed away, lost all of our fencing, all of our equipment. Um, so I'll turn my attention to that at that point. But right now, we're just trying to get our kids back in the buildings. Um, 
we have some areas that a bus cannot get to at this time. I'm hoping to be able to uh, acquire some SUVs maybe to get to those areas. Um, a lot of the haulers, the road is falling off. A, 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 a car or a truck can make it through that area, but a bus cannot. And uh, we got some areas it's really going to take a while, I believe, before we're able to get buses back there. So. Mm. Well, I know you're working really hard to get open, and uh, we wish you the best in that uh, start date that you hope for. And please, uh, if there's anything that we can do to help support that, I know you're doing all you can. Uh, and that's that's all anybody can ask. Thanks, Damien. Uh, Denise, uh, what's going on in Letcher County? Uh, much like Damien, uh, I feel like every time I get a plan, a piece of the jigsaw puzzle pops out. So right now we've had we're having sewer issues at Fleming Neon Middle School. Uh, and that whole area of Fleming Neon and the I had hoped to be able to start using that building and putting one of my elementaries in with that school by mid-September. And now they tell me that the temporary packaged sewer plant won't be delivered until September 22nd, if then, and then it takes some installation. So I'm having to go back and look at how we can start without those two buildings. So I don't have a start date yet. Um, we still have a lot of road work that has to be done, but emergency management will uh, has been great to work with us on doing what they can to get more of our roads um, passable until then. But um, we have another meeting this afternoon to know a little bit more long term wise. Um, you know, things are looking a little better about how quickly we can get some of our buildings repaired. Uh, and, and but our temporary situation is still um, don't have a good definitive date to start. So we're working as fast as we can and hard as we can, um, but there's still so many unknowns that I hope by next week I'll have some definites. Yeah, I know that you feel the urgency to get everybody back and it must be frustrating to have these delays. I, I hope everyone that's supporting you is working with the urgency that, that y'all feel uh, in Letcher County. Um, are there any things that you're doing, Denise, to kind of, I mean, uh, uh, Try and keep the community together, or, um, you know, keep track of everybody and keep everybody connected. Things that the community is doing to kind of uh, stay cohesive. Yes, there's a couple of great things that are happening. You know, each of our schools are working and contacting families individually and checking on their individual needs. But uh, we had a home football game Friday night and had a huge crowd. It was a great atmosphere. Everybody needed it. It was a very good um, time for everybody to come together and just be thankful. And um, it was, we, unfortunately it rained and we had a lightning delay and that made everybody a little bit anxious, but any, uh, all of our um, community really were thankful and happy and it gave them a good distraction. And so we're doing some things like that, trying to keep that positive. Uh, we're trying to put our positive stories out there. We've had an overwhelming success with a book drive uh, and people are delivering books for our libraries and um, we're trying to keep that positive attitude and, and our schools are still doing the outreach. They're still taking supplies out to families. They're still um, taking food and doing everything to stay connected to the families and keep us abreast of what their needs are and looking for long-term needs as well. Thanks, Denise. Uh, we all just admire your leadership for uh, that community right now. Um, other superintendents? Commissioner, real quick from Knox County. We, um, I'm a little more optimistic on the 19th as a start date. Uh, by next Wednesday, I'll know for sure if that's a go. Uh, worst case scenario, uh, I think the 26th. If we can't go on the 19th, we can get them back in on the 26th. The only other change that I want to report, the ATC, uh, once again, we found more damage. Uh, I'm not optimistic on getting back in that building this year, just to be quite honest with you. We have made arrangements at the high school. We're looking at some temporary shelters for shops. Um, we'll know more about that by, by next week. Uh, but I, I, you know, we may get in sometime February or March back in that building, but but I, I'm, I doubt it. Well, it's good to hear the progress that you're making, but like others have said, it's sort of, um, uh, you know, two steps forward, one step back, it seems like, um, as you uncover more things. Thanks, Brent. Um, uh, others? Commissioner Glass, this is Will Noble representing Breathitt County School District. Uh, just a small update, we uh, we are going to start school on the 29th, Monday, so uh, we've made some major headways. Uh, we did have a home football game Friday night, and that was, went off well. Uh, 
we are still having some challenges with some roads. Uh, we're going to have to each day that's going to be changing uh, our daily drop off and pick up points in different areas. And we're working with local and state officials to uh, see when those roads are going to be fixed and uh, able to travel again. We are traveling those roads daily to see uh, uh, what's going on in that area. Our ATC, of course, is being reloca relocated uh, right now at this time, and we're working on getting those students set up and ready to go. But we're excited and ready to start school Monday. Thanks, Will. Uh, appreciate that that update. Please give uh, Superintendent Watts our best as well. And uh, we've we've been uh, uh, working right alongside with uh, Hazard Community College around uh, getting that ATC open. I think we're getting closer on that, so that's encouraging as well. We appreciate all your hard work around that. Thank you. Others. Commissioner Glass, White Size, More Jackson Independent. Uh, we're on day seven. Uh, it's been an incredible journey just to see everyone back in the school uh, as far as our extracurricular activities. Our uh, soccer team will have their first home game. Uh, we uh, partner with Douthat Park, which is part of the Jackson Park and Recreation System. So uh, our field is ready to go and uh, we're excited about that. Our baseball and softball fields were hit pretty hard. So we're working with uh, the mayor's office and the parks and recreation to see what we need to do there, but it's going to take some major cleanup uh, partnering with those with those entities. But we're we're for sure that everything will work out well for our spring sports. But we did have uh, both teams that lost all of their equipment, and I know that's minor, but uh, that's something that we've got to work out and try to get uh, to get fixed. Uh, for our upcoming seasons. I do want to give uh, just some th thank yous uh, to some specific school districts and superintendents, if you don't mind. Um, Warren County uh, Superintendent Clayton, uh, Hardin County Superintendent Morgan, Menifee County Superintendent Spencer, and uh, Superintendent Meadows out of McGoffin County. Uh, some incredible donations over the last uh, last few weeks and we we're very appreciative of that because uh, that's going to our families and to our staff so uh, just wanted to give a, a shout out to them because uh, it's been it's been incredible about the outpouring that we've had with them but uh we're going uh staff is a uh, great to get back uh students are great to get back and uh, look forward to, to continuing our success Thanks, Wayne. And I appreciate you recognizing all those supporting uh, communities around the state that have, have pitched in and telling the stories about your athletic teams, your soccer teams getting back. As we heard from Denise, these uh, events are really important in, in small town Kentucky, but they have even more importance right now. Uh, just to, uh, an opportunity to bring the community together, people to see each other and reconnect. Uh, it's just heartwarming to hear that, that those are, are taking place. And I know that, that you have barriers to getting to that place as well. Uh, others? Um, this is Sandra Combs, Hazard Independent. Uh, we're on uh, day five of being back in school. Um, teachers, families, students, they all seem very excited to be back. Um, as Wayne and Denise said, we've had football games, soccer games, middle school games. Um, so it is a nice distraction. Uh, we do still have families that are in need. Uh, we've got several staff members that lost vehicles. Uh, some of them are riding the bus to school. Um, so, um, you know, just uh, as everyone else has said, it's going to be a long, long journey, but uh, we'll get there and we'll continue our social emotional support for our families and students and uh, and uh, thank everyone also for everything they've done for our community. Thank you, Senator. Uh, we appreciate that update. I spent some days up um, on Mr. Cooper's field up there, so it's good to hear that y'all are getting getting some use out of that. Um, anyone else? Okay, I think we've covered everyone. If I'm, if uh, someone um, wants to come on that we've missed, please just uh, pipe in. Uh, Tony, let me turn things over to you just to continue this storytelling. I think I think today this was really important just to continue to update people on the, the progress that you've made, uh, what you've got ahead, and some of the challenges that that you're facing. As we heard from Wayne, uh, the the state is really responding to needs that you have. So uh, make sure that that you're able to lift up and say, here are, here are some things that you need. And uh, the the rest of the state, the rest of the country, the rest of the world is, is stepping up and coming through for you as well. Go ahead, Tony. All right, thank you, Commissioner. Um, again, once again, shout out to Superintendent Shepard. You see her there on the slide. We uh, just posted her column on Kentucky Teacher. And uh, I think it's a really great 
Uh, it's a really great column. I think everybody who has contributed so far, but she really, really talks about the importance of teamwork and communication, um, not just inside her district, but across the state with other districts and other people who are trying to help. Um, so we'll go ahead as soon as I'm done sharing. I'm afraid to move my screen, um, but I'll put the link in the chat there so you all can read that and I'll make sure it's in your email later today. Um, and then on the second slide, she sent so many great photos. Um, I wanted to just share some of those there. Um, I think it really depicts very much what she's described in, in her op-ed and in her, in her column about um, everyone from uh, students to bus drivers to technology staff to transportation staff really pitching in um, to help uh, those in their community, but also those um, in different counties across the state. So thank you, uh, Superintendent Shepard, for doing that. Uh, in the works, I just wanted to share that we are working on statewide recognition, honoring uh, your efforts and the efforts of those um, across the state um, to um, assist and ensure the safety of our students and families. So you'll be hearing more about that uh, in the coming weeks, hopefully, as well as uh, you continue to do this during uh, the recovering. And I also am um, excited to share with you that um, KSP, Kentucky State Police has um, received a donation of 15,000 books from Dolly Parton's Imagination Library, and we are going to be working in partnership with, um, with them, and I think through KVAC, to um, get the books out to districts that have been impacted. Um, I think there are about six to ten titles, so it's not like, you know, a huge you know, each district can get a thousand because you're going to get a bunch of the same titles, but I do think it's going to be really, really helpful. And I think it'll be very uh, nice for your families and maybe your teachers to get book sets um, as you continue to recover. So I'll be getting more details on that here probably within the next week or so. But I just wanted to let you know that that's coming. We get a lot of emails from people um, that are wanting to help and those have continued definitely as we've um, as we've continued on. So I think that's all I have for today. Yes. Up next. <laughs> okay, great. Thanks, Tony. Um, let's shift over to Robin and Brian just with an update on the bill that's dropped in the special session, where we are right now. They're going to walk you through the components of that, some questions that we have about it, and, and hear some of your perspectives. We want to make sure that we're doing our best to advocate with the General Assembly. What are some things that you need right now? Understanding that there may be steps that they take now in the special session, and then uh, they may take further steps in the interim session that's coming up in January. Robin and Brian, go ahead. Thanks, Commissioner. So we'll just kind of walk you through where we are and then uh, give you a kind of a highlight overview of the of the uh, legislation that's being proposed. Uh, so there's two identical bills, one in the House, one in the Senate. This is primarily so that they can get it to the governor more quickly than the traditional five or six days. Um, so there, the hyperlinks to both the bills are right there. Uh, so you can go read the legislation in full. Next slide, please. This is a real quick timeline. They started yesterday. Uh, they have not. They introduced the bills yesterday um, in the chambers, but did not vote on it in committee. They just introduced it. Uh, they resumed today at four. They most of them are over in Louisville today uh, at the state fair for committee meetings and the ham breakfast. So they'll resume. They'll gavel in at four. Uh, it should pass out of both chambers tomorrow. Uh, and go to the governor for action so he could sign it as early as tomorrow afternoon or evening. Next slide, please. So who qualifies? Uh, most of the provisions of the bill qualify for the federally declared disaster zone in eastern Kentucky. Uh, there is a little bit of tweaking that's being done to the West Kentucky safe fund, uh, and we'll go over that, but there are all the counties uh, that currently qualify. Next slide, please. So the primary goal of this piece of legislation is to create the East Kentucky Safe Fund. And you'll notice that they're, we're having to now differentiate between the East and West. So the, the Safe Fund that they created in response to the tornado disasters is now the West Kentucky Safe Fund. Uh, the new one for the flood districts is the East Kentucky Safe Fund. So the high level, uh, about $200 million will be allocated to, to the East Kentucky Safe Fund. About 75 million of that will flow through military affairs, uh, but school, school districts will have access to some of that money. Uh, there's 40 million uh, for liquidity for the school districts um, or 
including for school districts. Uh, and then 40 million will flow through KDE for things like school cleanup, repair, wraparound services. Um, it's pretty flexible. Um, we do want to note that any reimbursements that you get uh, from FEMA, insurance, those type of things will go back to the state. Um, but obviously that's a little down the, down the road, but we did want to make you aware of that. Um, one part of this that needs to be noted is that there will be this does not cover any new construction inside the 100 year floodplain. So we are getting clarification still, but as far as we understand, uh, repair and renovation is fine within the existing buildings within the floodplain, uh, but any new construction will have to be outside of uh, the 100 year floodplain. Next slide, please. So just like they did for Western Kentucky, they're providing waived days. Uh, so uh, at the discretion of the commissioner, they, we can waive up to 15 student attendance days through January 20 of next year. Uh, those 20 days are district wide, um, but the, uh, at the discretion of the commissioner, uh, additional days can be waived for individual schools. So. Uh, and for your employees, those waived days do count as contract days. All of this is pretty much in line with what happened for Western Kentucky. Next slide, please. So there's also provisions in here for remote instruction days. Um, and so you can kind of read through the first part of that, uh, but I highlighted at the bottom the kind of the bottom line. Um, there's no more than 20 remote instruction days available currently in the legislation. So that might be something that we want to address uh, potentially as an issue. Um, uh, next slide, please. They've also provided a provision where the local board of education can grant emergency leave to staff. Um, so the example that I gave yesterday in the committee meeting you know, if you have an employee that has FEMA coming out to their home uh, for some reason, you know, and they need to leave on a Tuesday to go meet them, um, that's part of why they've done this emergency leave. So that's available for your full and part time um, classified or certified staff. Next slide, please. So the second part that they did applies to the West Kentucky Safe Fund, and this is more of the long term um, effort. Right, so this is trying to address the change in property values uh, and the impact on your all's districts and your budgets because of that. Um, they are going to revisit this at a later date for Eastern Kentucky, but right now these provisions apply only to the West Kentucky uh, districts that were impacted by the tornadoes. So um, the short version is they are going to cover your difference in uh, your loss a um, 100% for fiscal year uh, 23, 66% in fiscal year 24, and a third of lost revenue in fiscal year 25. So um, again, that right now only applies to the districts that were impacted in the west part of the state, but um, they made it pretty clear that they are going to revisit this issue probably in the 23 session, um, but I don't think they have the data right now uh, to deal with this for East Kentucky. So um, this will be coming down the line for flood districts. And, and Brian, if I can pop into this please, uh, slide please for a minute. Um, our understanding, the language in the bill says realized lo revenue losses. That applies to local tax revenue losses, at least at, at, at this time. That is our understanding of what they're talking about when they say lost revenue that would be realized local tax revenue loss so i think we uh, let's pause here uh superintendents you've had uh, just a high level overview of the components that are in the bills that have been introduced uh, please let us know uh, what reactions mm -hmm. uh, thoughts uh, additions, revisions, uh, things that you're thinking about based on what you've heard. Uh, so Robin and Brian can hear those and we'll do our best to convey that information to the General Assembly. And, and Commissioner, if I could also just provide a little bit of, I guess this would be called color commentary. 
That'd be great. Um, about, about what's going on in the bill and what what at least what we're gleaning at this point. We do still have several questions that we're trying to get clarity around. So um, some of the more detailed questions that might apply specifically to certain circumstances in your district, we we may need more opportunity to kind of flesh that out. But I think it is very, very important. There's language in the bill that leads us to believe that if you are not registered and applying for relief through both FEMA and your insurance, that it is possible if you don't take those affirmative steps that you will not be able to access funds out of this Eastern Kentucky fund. So over the last several days, we've been working hard to try to send you emails and notifications and uh, Valoria Smith, who is on the call with us today, also reaching out with phone calls. I highly, highly encourage you to go ahead and register uh, with FEMA. Um, I know many of you, if not all of you, have already contacted your insurance companies, but I encourage you to do that just almost as a just in case. Um, if FEMA, if it's not eligible under FEMA and you still need that relief, then it's going to be important that you have registered and applied with FEMA in order to access this fund. So I really, we've heard from several districts that have decided not or are indicating at this point that they're not applying for uh, and registering with FEMA. I, I'm concerned without that, you're going to run the risk of not being able to access funds from the East, East Kentucky Fund. Uh, Valoria is on the call today and you should have information and emails that have been sent to you of how to access her number. And um, I will share with you uh, on a call that that KDE did because we have contents in our ATCs that were uh, destroyed and it literally took us 10 to 15 minutes with a little bit of assistance. So it's not a big um, time consuming uh, effort, but I'm just uh, very concerned that if you don't do that, you may miss out on opportunities from East Kentucky. So if you have not done that, I highly encourage you to do that. Um, for, for those of you, the math wizards on our call, when uh, Brian ran through the numbers on the 200 million that has been appropriated or will be appropriated. You saw those numbers didn't quite add up to 200 million. What Brian has put on the screen is those pots of funds that school districts will be eligible to access. Um, there's still some other financial relief in the bill that school districts would not have access to. So when you're looking at those numbers, that's why it doesn't um, add up to that 200 million. Um, there are also some other, uh, section 11 of the bill really goes through the operations and logistics relief. And as you look at section 11, you'll see that really trying to address potential relief for all types of circumstances that our districts are experiencing. Um, of course, we've heard today um, some of our school districts that are still just trying to figure out an opening date at this point while others of you have had the ability to come back a little more quickly. So you'll see in here um, some effort in trying to look at district ride relief, classroom relief, individual relief for your staff and your employees, as well as contract day relief for like groups of your employees. So it's sort of a mix of uh, pieces and parts, just trying to try to give as many options as, as possible and flexibility. I will share with you some of the numbers and counts in here are not as um, generous as as we had hoped for, um, but I do think a lot of the sort of topics that we advocated for are included in the bill. So we're, we are grateful that the General Assembly has, has provided a lot of flexibility, um, not to the number of days that we were trying to get us to just just because of so many unknowns. We know you still have unknowns. And so we're trying to be a little more generous in that regard. So um, I'll stop there. Uh, as Brian said, you know, the, the part about the buildings, um, the bill is very clear across not only school districts, but also for your cities and counties and your local communities. The intention of this fund is not for new construction as it relates to buildings that would be uh, placed in floodplains. So we see that throughout the bill. Um, I do think as we uh, look forward to building and seeing what that's going to look like, I think there will be a revisit back on funding for that, perhaps at a later date. 
but just making clear that it can't be in floodplains um, as, as we start thinking about rebuilding efforts on new construction only. Um, let me pause there. Um, that's sort of additional color commentary for you. I no, do. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Robin. Uh, I do think we are very interested, and I know some of you are just getting the opportunity either last night or or this morning to go through the bill as we have. But also, but we are very interested in things that you see or don't see that we can communicate back to the legislative body. And I was just going to add one last thing, and I think that that and that's that this is the first step. Right. And so they were pretty clear yesterday that this is the first bite at the apple and that they intend on um, doing more uh, probably later in the 23 session. Uh, so to, to Robin's point about the generosity, I just want to make sure that um, you all realize that I think there'll be additional relief coming. Um, and some of that may just depend on what we ask for or what needs we make them aware of. Um, so. Yeah, just I'll stop there. OK, superintendents, uh, feedback or thoughts just as you've heard about this. I have a quick just a clarification. You said only new builds were not allowable in the, if they were in the floodplain, because I've got a school that I'm certain is in the floodplain, but it has had significant damage. And I'm just wondering, is there a cap for the renovation? Uh, from a monetary standpoint, is there a cap of how much you can spend uh, on that? So, Superintendent Judd, that's one of the clarifying questions that we're seeking. The, the bill seems very clear on no new construction. Um, it also allows for rebuild and repair. So, um, we're, we're trying to make sure that we are interpreting the provisions of the bill and what the General Assembly is sharing with us in this in this bill that there's not a cap or it says to the extent of the damage. Throughout the bill it talks about uh, the damage uh, or, or the amount of the damage that is caused by the flooding. So as I think through that one of the things it let's say you had a two-story building and flooding got into the bottom area they wouldn't expect you to expend dollars on the top part that didn't suffer any damage to the building. But the word to the extent of the damage of the building is is in the bill. So we're trying to get some clarity on that. Um, okay. They do understand many of our buildings as you're trying to repair uh, the damage to them. So, so really be able to conduct school you're, you necessarily have to clean those buildings up. So we'll, okay, thank you. We'll try to get additional clarity for you on that. Thank you. Robin, I just have one other comment, and I think I've shared this with you before, on the number of days they're waiving for student attendance. Um, my concern is about the winter. You know, we're getting a late start time. I don't know when we can start yet. And then I don't know how many snow days we're going to have. And I'm really concerned about getting the number of hours or how many hours I can get in in the time frame for the spring. So it's, you think they will they will address that in the spring or in the January session? I think that, um, you know, the provisions of this bill, a lot of the things in it are tied to a date of January. I think it's 23rd. Um, so, so uh, I do see that as an indication of they want to see how many days you need up until that point, and then that will allow them to come back and assess where districts are at that point in your school year about what other relief they need to do when they reconvene in January. Thank you. You're welcome. Damian Johnson with Jenkins. Uh, has there been any discussion about um, being able to continue with old attendance rates as we did through COVID? Because what I'm seeing that some of these schools districts has been impacted. It's got back in sessions and their attendance rates have been pretty abysmal. Thank, thank you, Damian. Um, there has been some discussion about that. I think that's something else that will get another bite at the apple in January as you all uh, they will be interested in seeing some data surrounding that 
And so as we roll along through the first part of the school year, uh, we will be asking districts to kind of let us know where you're seeing your ADA sit um, so that, again, they can come back and consider that in January. I don't know that they're going to come back in the special session and address that right now. I think they're interested in seeing what it looks like, though. Yeah, I don't think they'll address it in the special, but I think there's a chance that they'll do something next session. And we are starting to hear some reports like that, Superintendent. So appreciate very much that you uh, keep that on our radar for us. Robin, I'd like just to make a comment. Uh, I'm appreciative that they are looking at the emergency days for our staff. And uh, with us being in seven days, that's a concern because we still have staff members who are without homes. And I'm just appreciative that that they are looking at that part for our staff members because they're still struggling and we want to try to get back to normalcy. So uh, I'm just appreciative of that. Thank you, Superintendent Sizemore. I think we've uh, I th think a lot of the provisions um, that have been included really are trying to think of everything across the board to provide that relief. Um, we are also very appreciative that the General Assembly has looked at so many different options of flexibility, especially for our staff. Um, you know, the communities are still very, very hard hit. And even getting us back into buildings and get schools back to normal, it doesn't mean the outside community is even healed to the extent that our schools may be. So it's really important that we can do everything that we can for our staff as well. Okay, thank you, Brian, and thank you, Robin. Any other feedback or questions uh, from our superintendents? Commissioner Lenny Whalen, Dawson Springs. Uh, just to throw in a couple things. Uh, first off, I, I, I'm very appreciative of what I've seen to this point in this legislation. Uh, Eastern Kentucky uh, folks, I think that this is a, a good start for, for you guys. Uh, I do think there's probably going to be more that you're going to see down the road that you're going to need. But based on my experience and what we dealt with, um, I think this is a, a very good start. And, and I'm appreciative of, of what they've tried to do here. And I'm hopeful that, you know, uh, this particular part gets through, uh, this bill gets through. And then I do think that there'll be some more things that's been mentioned that hopefully they'll take up and take a look at when the regular session starts back, uh, you know, in January. So uh, I'm just I'm thankful for, for what I'm seeing here. And uh, I think that there'll be more work to be done, but I think this is a, a great start. And I think Robin will, will attest, uh, you know, a lot of these things are things that we had a lot of discussion about uh, right after the tornado struck us, both in the short term and the longer term but uh, hopefully this will be a good start to, to get you guys moving in the direction that you need to get into and just real quickly i'll i'll finish by saying uh you know the attendance uh wayne i think you might have brought up the attendance numbers and things like that uh, i'll just say right now i think in western kentucky the numbers are abysmal uh we had our uh, su uh, uh regional superintendent meeting earlier this week and uh, you know, many of our superintendents was just talking about how how bad attendance was right now because COVID's just making its round, uh, you know, through students and through our staff. Uh, and obviously, it's not as bad as it was initially, but we still have those absences. So that's definitely something that I think will be on everybody's radar uh, as we progress through the school year and as you guys progress through, you know, trying to get things back on. Mm. Thank you, Lenny. Um, and just a reminder about the waves of uh, challenges that our schools have faced over the past couple of years. Um, appreciate your perspective, and I think we've learned a lot from uh, how we responded to the Western Kentucky tornadoes. You see some of that showing up in the legislation that's here, uh, but we still have more to do, clearly. Uh, anyone else? Okay, well, uh, hearing none, uh, let's shift to Valoria Smith with an update from uh, Kentucky Emergency Management. Valoria, are you on with us? I am. Good morning, good afternoon. Not sure whether I'm in morning or afternoon. Um, Depending on where you are in the state, it will matter. But uh, in either case, thank you for the sentiment, But and please go right ahead. 
Okay, just want to give you an update on the schools. Um, currently, we have 12 schools that have um, submitted their RPAs. We have six that will not apply. We have two that we still have not had a response from, and we have one that is in process. So that is where we are with that. Additionally, I sent out an email. Um, let, let me back up a little bit. Um, we had three counties um, that were new to the disaster, Lincoln, Powell, and Lee. And I have reached out to those three districts. So if you guys have contact with those three districts, just let them know that I'm trying to reach out to them just to kind of catch them up where everybody else is and to get their RPA submitted too. Uh, in addition to the RPAs, KYTC is um, doing debris removal. If any of your schools will be using KYTC for debris removal, um, I sent out an email this morning, just so just look at it and respond to that email um, if, if you're going to be using that, and I will be um, supporting you through that effort as well. Um, there was questions about the briefing. Um, emails probably were received by some of you from Jessica Mitchell from Kentucky Emergency Management. She is starting to schedule some of the briefings. Um, they should begin tomorrow. Also, in addition to that, I was told that I will be doing some one-on-one -on -one briefings with all the superintendents, and I can do them with the school too if you want me to as well, but definitely um, look for an email from Jessica Mitchell in the coming days now. Don't worry about it because it is going to be recorded. So if you're not able to attend in person, you will be able to access um, the recording for that. Anybody questions about anything that I just went over? Okay, one more thing, uh, Damien, for the church that you said is, I believe you said is next to the school, have you submitted an RPA for that church? I have not. That is my church. And um, I spoke to, um, I think it was Adam um, uh, Lutterback, who came around and helped us do our FEMA application. And um, he was supposed to reach out to my pastor. I'm not sure where that's at. I need to follow up on that. You know what? Can you give me the information? Sure. I certainly can. Okay. What's the name of your church? Burdine Free Will Baptist. Please just spell it for me. B U R D I N E. Free Will Baptist. Yeah, that's correct. Do me a favor, Damien. Um, shoot me an email with the pastor's information on that so that I can um, um, get that to Diana Daniels or one of the two of us, either Diana or I, will take care of him today. Thank you so much. I will do that. Okay, and if anybody else have churches that are attached to across the street from or whatever uh, from your school that are right there, just send me a quick email and then um, I'll make sure that um, that they um, are contacted and that we take care of them too. That's all I have if anybody, if no one has any questions. Thank you, Valoria. We appreciate you being on with us. And if uh, you would ever need support from us in reaching out and making sure that your messages are uh, getting to our district staff or superintendents, please never hesitate to let us know. We can help facilitate that as well. Okay. Uh, and uh, is uh, Dr. Clark on uh, to talk about the Eastern Kentucky Crisis Counseling Program? I am indeed. Go right ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm Patty Clark. I'm an assistant director with the Department for Behavioral Health. And I did just want to um, provide some updates uh, from of some of the work that we're doing um, in uh, DBH around um, your regions. I did want to share that I have um, a couple people with me. Uh, Tina Robbins is an executive advisor. Um, Amy Potts ha is handling our disaster response at the EOC. Uh, Miriam Silman is an expert in trauma and providing uh, support um, for those who have in, in, been impacted by trauma. And then Beth Johnson is, um, Beth Jordan, sorry, 
um, is our uh, children's behavioral health specialist. And so I know we have a short amount of time, um, but we will get additional information to all of you from, from them as well. Um, the CCP grant or the crisis counseling program as um, Commissioner Glass mentioned is a program that will allow us to do um, crisis counseling over the next um, the next few weeks. Uh, it is a 60 day project that will then turn into a regular services program that will go through the nine month mark. This will allow us to have folks in the communities providing crisis counseling to you, your staff, your your children, the, the parents, everyone that's involved um, in in this disaster. Uh, right now we have uh, Mountain Comprehensive Care, Kentucky River, Cumberland River uh, are responding and they are being supported by teams from New Vista and uh, Pathways. And those they're coming in from Lexington and Ashland to provide additional uh, support. Uh, we know that Kentucky River, for example, their staff lost a significant number of houses. And so they are um, they need some backup as we move forward. Um, I do want to point out that crisis counseling is not therapy per se. It is really just that first touch and that early follow up to determine what types of needs are needed and really to connect them with available long term resources. And so really want to make sure that we're not expecting these folks to be doing um, crisis counseling programs, but they are in they can come in and talk with students. They can talk with parents um, and your staff as well and really work to make sure that they get connected to longer term care that we have available as well. They are also going door to door and making contacts in shelters and other locations where families are staying at this point of, uh, in time. Um, and really just want to make sure that if you have a specific request, just please don't hesitate to reach out to me uh, and we'll get your um, get your request sent to the teams that are on the ground um, in your region. Um, I'm also going to drop in the chat two flyers. One is um, a virtual care services that are, sorry, I have too many windows open, um, are available to anyone. Actually, I, I cannot get it to let me drop. So I have emailed those to, um, to the main office and we'll get those out to you. But we also have um, one, so there is virtual services that are available for anyone. Two phone numbers, um, they are being staffed 24 seven. And I just encourage you to um, post them in your schools, post them, share them with parents, uh, share them with your staff. I mean, they're the, the, it, they've experienced this significant trauma and we wanna make sure that they know that there are people that they can talk to at this point in time. For many of them, it will just be, just be a one or two calls for them to get some of the um, uh, the stress and the trauma that they've experienced kind of out of their head and, and able to move on, but others will need to be referred to long term care. So we have they will get connected in that in that uh, resource from that through that resource. Um, I did also want to touch base. Um, around your mandated suicide prevention trainings. Um, we really, we know that, you know, some of you have not had a chance to do that. Um, I know that um, heading back to school, it's not the first thing on your list, but I would want to um, just encourage you that if you're, if you haven't already done your staff training and you haven't already done your student training, um, that we have a new program called Code Red that is a universal safety planning uh, for all students. It encourages them to find their strengths, develop a plan so that if they find themselves in distress, they can um, tap into that plan first and foremost. Our team trained in Perry County yesterday. So um, Mr. Judd, I, uh, if you have any comments or wanna share anything about that training and how it went, um, that would be great. And the, then the we- the training was excellent. Uh, Beck and, and Brittany did an awesome job. We actually trained our entire staff and just the form itself. And, and Beck made an interesting point that, you know, when you're to the point of thinking about suicide, your brain will lie to you. And this form helped us, helped you identify reasons to live, goals and things like that, that you could refer to 
in the event that you ever got to that point. So it was extremely beneficial. Staff was extremely complimentary of it. They did a wonderful job. Thank you. And so I was just going to tell you that our team is available to support you as you consider this option, but we really want to make sure that you're thinking about not doing a regular suicide prevention training this year. We don't recommend it for safety purposes, very similar to back in 2020 when we, we asked you to go more of an intervention route or a postvention, uh, just because of the impact that students have experienced. We, we, we classify this level of trauma as very similar to having one of their classmates or their or their um, um, a school staff member die by suicide. And so we really just want to encourage you to think about an alternative way to providing support to them. Um, I'm going to check. I think Miriam had to step off, um, but I do have a, just a couple of things that she asked me to share with you. Um, it's helpful if your transportation department can look to see if they can minimize any big dis destructions as students are coming to and from school. I know that's not likely possible all the time, but for example, back when McGothan County had their to tornado, there was a pile of debris at the entrance to the school. That can be pretty triggering for kids uh, to see that on a regular basis. So if there's any way that you can begin to move those uh, reminders out, out of their line of sight. Um, when you're going back to a new or an altered building, make sure to do some tours when you take kids back so they just really have an idea of what the building looks like. It helps reduce their anxiety. It helps them uh, really visualize where they're going to be spending their time and, and helps uh, make sure that transition is smooth. And then um, Obviously, utilizing your Friskies in your school districts and, and posting and sending out small bits of information to promote resilience and connection. Um, you know, just things that say happy Monday, happy Thursday, give it updates, things like that. Just little tiny bites um, that can help a caregiver or a student uh, read quickly and then get back to um, their work and it just is a reminder that things uh, will get back to normal um, soon, sooner than later. Um, and I just want to stop there. I know we're pretty close to time, but wanted to see if there were any questions. And um, I'm going to put my email in the chat. And so again, don't hesitate to reach out. And Amy and her team at the EOC and Miriam and Tina and Beth and her team here, we will share additional information as we get it. And we just wanna make sure you know to access those crisis counselors. Excellent, uh, thanks so much, uh, Dr. Clark. Any questions or follow-up for uh, Dr. Clark while we have her? Okay, hearing none, thank you so much for being with us. We'll now shift to the last item that's on our agenda, which is just some updates from Rob and Kenny and our Office of Finance and Operations. Robin, do you have any things to update the superintendents on? Just a couple quick things. I know we're short on time. For those of you that we have been talking about mobile classrooms, and I know we've shifted. Do we need them? Do we don't need them? When do we need them? I just wanted to make you aware that the uh, posting for the solicitation is on the street right now at the state level for mobile classrooms. And uh, those, uh, it closes on September 2nd. And as soon as we find out, we will make that available as another option for you in the event that you need those mobile classrooms as things continue to evolve and change. Also, um, uh, I wanted to mention a provision of the bill that's in there about fiscal, strained fiscal liquidity. Um, for a few of our districts, I do understand, and you've reached out, I've had personal conversations with you about concerns around cash flow and what that looks like, especially as, as you're awaiting insurance proceeds or you're awaiting uh, FEMA assistance. So it, there is some language in the bill that allows for advancement of funds based upon strained fiscal liquidity. Um, those determinations uh, of the advancement of those funds, even though the money is at the emergency man management, um, uh, Kentucky Emergency Management, 
The determinations will be made by the Department of Education and will be advising Kentucky Emergency Management of the needs of our districts. So we'll be putting together information of what we need you to share. Several of you have already sent me sort of spreadsheets on your expenditures and kind of what your cash flow is looking like. I really, really appreciate that. We'll be working with your finance officers as we consider and make those um, requests for advancement of funds on your behalf. So just stay tuned. Just know that that will be coming and we'll be working with your finance officers in case you need that advancement of funds. Again, that is uh, advancement of funds while you're awaiting reimbursement for either insurance proceeds or FEMA um, to help you with cash flow. Just wanted to mention those and let you know that there are provisions in the bill for that. And that's all I have, Commissioner Glass. Thank you, Robin. Uh, and thanks everyone for being on with us. I know that we ran a little long, and but I think these meetings are incredibly productive uh, for us just hearing about um, some needs that you have. I do think that we probably ought to meet again next week uh, just to debrief where we are in the wake of the special session and what next steps are still ahead, and especially if some of you are still working to get open and uh, new challenges are emerging all the time. Uh, so unless there's an objection uh, from the superintendents that are all on here, I think we should go ahead and schedule uh, next week. Okay, seeing some head head nods, we'll make that happen. Thanks, everyone, and I look forward to seeing some of you uh, next week on my visit. Thanks, everybody.